Were you aware? Fire Emblem Three Houses Japanese title is Fire Emblem Fuka Setsu Getsu, or Fire Emblem Wind Flower Snow Moon, a reference to the Chinese poem of the same name. It translates to, at the time of snow, moon, and flowers, I think of you. This poem focuses heavily on romantic relationships, as well as the beauty of the four seasons and the passage of time, a perfect allusion to the time-based events and time jump that takes place within the story of Fire Emblem Three Houses. The author begets the drama of life experiences and promotes embracing its changes with determination, while echoing that beautiful things don't last forever. Likewise, the characters in the game embark on a long journey of both good and bad moments, these memorable fragments of time ever in flux, just like the fleeting four seasons and reminding us of the inevitable march of time. The original poem draws connections between the various seasons and colors, with the snow of winter being blue, the moon of autumn yellow, and the flowers of spring being pink or red. Each of these seasons and their associated color is represented within the game as one of the main lords. Dimitri, who hails from the frigid north and holy kingdom of Fargus, represents the blue snow of winter. Claude, who hails from the eastern province of Regan in the Leicester Alliance, which is emblazoned with a moon-like crest, makes him the yellow moon of autumn, and Edelgard hails from the southern Adrestian Empire, whose color is red, making her the red flowers of spring. It also seems very likely that Byleth was meant to be a reference to the green winds of summer, which is missing from the original poem and other media, perhaps due to a lack of romantic undertones associated with its more extreme heat. Byleth's, and by extension Sothis' color schemes, are very green or teal-oriented, and Byleth serves as the wild card of the story, where the player's choices determine the overall trajectory of how the story plays out. And just like the wealth of history behind the Japanese title, the localized title also has its fair share of depth. The localized title of the game, Fire Emblem Three Houses, is likely a reference to the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, a 14th century historical novel often attributed to Luo Guanzong, which takes place toward the end of the Han Dynasty during times of war and chaos, and is referred to as the Three Kingdoms period in Chinese history. The story is partly historical, but also fictional and mythical in its adaptation, and focuses on the lives of feudal lords and their retainers, as they either attempt to replace the fading Han Dynasty or restore it to its former glory. The focus of the story is on three major powers that emerge during this time, the three states of Cao Wei, Shu Han, and Eastern Wu, all of whom struggled to achieve dominance for nearly 100 years. All of this might sound familiar to you if you've played any of the Dynasty Warriors series of games by Koei Tecmo, as each of these three states, or houses, is represented in those games with their own color. The House of Eastern Wu is represented by the color red, the Cao Wei House is blue, and the Shu Han House is green. All of this is certainly telling, considering the fact that Fire Emblem Three Houses was, for the first time in a main series Fire Emblem title, co-developed with Koei Tecmo, the game developers behind those Warriors games that are largely focused upon the romance of the Three Kingdoms. So if you think about it, it seems that we first got a Warriors game with a Fire Emblem coat of paint, and now we've just received a Fire Emblem game with a Warriors coat of paint. During the development of Fire Emblem Three Houses, the appearances of several characters, lines of dialogue, and other aspects of the game changed radically from how they appeared in the initial E3 2018 trailer and their final appearances in the release version of the game. Many character sprites and UI elements were different, a major example of these changes being Edelgard's original sprite, which featured her with blonde hair instead of her typical white, as well as her red sash, whereas in the final game, since she'd be a character under your control, her sprite has a blue sash. There's also a large difference of the kerning of the in-game fonts, with numbers being much farther apart from each other in the initial trailer. The character Mercedes originally had a more chestnut brown hair color instead of the very light dirty blonde hair that she has now. This may be due to her relationship with another character, her brother, and perhaps when she was originally created, she was not related to that other character. It's also possible that the developers didn't want Mercedes looking too much like a member of Edelgard's family due to her original hair and eye color. It appears they also didn't have her and other students' models finished in time for this original trailer, as they appear as generic-looking enemies. The character Hilda also received a portrait revamp over the course of development, as while it doesn't look incredibly different from her final portrait art, there are definitely distinct differences between the two, though it's unclear why the developers felt this change was necessary. Hilda also originally appears here wielding a bow, instead of her usual axe preference in the final game. It also seems very likely that Ash was originally a Golden Deer student, as he appears alongside Hanneman, Hilda, and Lorenz in this initial trailer. So it's possible that our lovable thief turned knight wasn't always meant to be a Blue Lion student. 
The character Dimitri's appearance also changed rather dramatically from the first time he appeared to his appearance in the final game. Originally his face was much rounder and had simpler eyebrows, but his face was later altered to be more angular and his eyebrows were thickened, perhaps to be even more expressive. Judging by his character arc and overall role in the story, I'd say that this was definitely an important change for them to have made. Even the other lords had some minor adjustments made to their portraits, adding more depth and detail and making slight alterations to the originals that were shared by Nintendo in 2018. There's definitely a lot more to unpack with all of these changes from the initial trailer, so if you'd like to learn more about everything that we know that changed over the course of Three Houses' development, be sure to check out this video here. Like the changes in many characters' appearances, major game mechanics also changed during the course of the game's development. The initial E3 2018 trailer for the game featured a brand new mechanic later referred to as formations. Many longtime series fans speculated that formations would be likely to replace the standard rock-paper-scissors weapon triangle that was present in most Fire Emblem games, where depending upon which formation the player selected for a character's soldiers, that would determine whether or not they had an advantage or disadvantage against other types of enemy soldier formations. But the initial trailer only showcased a single formation, this wedge formation that actually ended up still making its way into the final game. Eventually this system or concept was scrapped though, and replaced with the Battalion and Gambit systems present in the final release version that we have today. During a 2019 hands-on preview of the game, YouTuber Rogers Base interviewed Chico, a Nintendo rep from Nintendo Treehouse, where she elaborated upon this change. In the previous year, like last year's E3, we mentioned about the different formations available in the game. They changed the battle system a little bit, so there's no different formations. They all look like this triangle shape, but the difference is that there's different types of battalions, these units, available. Not much is known about why the change was made, but the system's new focus is more upon granting your units separate stat boosts and unique combat and battlefield abilities instead of directly affecting the overall battle system at large. Edelgard's voice actress also changed over the course of the game's development. Christina V was the initial choice for Edelgard, but at some point she was replaced by Tara Platt. While we have no official explanation as to why this change occurred, it's possible that the character of Edelgard herself changed over the course of development, and the initial trailer was more of a proof of concept. Christina's Edelgard is much softer and more kind-sounding, compared to the more stern and empress-like tone that Tara Platt's Edelgard embodies. I will return here someday, my teacher. Promise me that you won't forget me. Tell me. Are you actually incapable of keeping quiet, or is your lack of self-awareness a condition of some sort? Whether or not you consider Edelgard to be more of a protagonist or antagonist varies heavily based upon which story path you believe to be canon, and your own personal views on her morality. But the difference in Christina V's line delivery and tone for Edelgard may indicate that she was initially planned to be much more of a black-and-white good character earlier on in development. With the release of the Cindered Shadows side story DLC for Fire Emblem Three Houses, the previously known about DLC characters that had been found in the game's code finally became recruitable in the main game. The character Yuri specifically received a number of back-end changes to his stats and character data with the release of the game update that added the new DLC. Compared to version 1.1.0, Yuri was changed to now have one point less of magic and dexterity and one more point of resistance at base and slightly less dexterity and charm stat growths, but slight buffs to his strength, speed, and resistance growths. With this change, he now has the highest natural speed growth of all the characters in the game. He also lost 11 points of max dexterity, but gained those 11 points in speed, giving him a maximum speed of 92, the highest maximum speed stat in the game. His D plus rank in sword level was also slightly nerfed to D rank, and instead of learning the Hay Slice combat art at C plus rank, he now learns Wind Sweep instead. Byleth has a last name. Byleth's full name is actually Byleth Eisner, which is initially revealed by checking out the grave of Byleth's mother. However, it's also listed within the game's code, just never fully displayed on their character profile, further lending to the fact that this is indeed Byleth's accurate last name. Gerald's full name can also be seen by hacking him into the player's army, revealing his full name to be Gerald Roos Eisner. As Reddit user Lufa11 pointed out, a closer look at the Seros mural reveals that it depicts the four saints as dragons. There's space for Keyhole and Seth Lean, Indek, Macwheel, and Io in the foreground in front of the goddess. Macwheel is the dragon with the cup-like thing on its tail, and Indek looks rather turtle-like, 
leaving Keyhole and Seth Lean as the two dragons on the left side. This image also holds another secret though. It aligns perfectly with the Crest of Flames, hiding it in plain sight. It was even shown peeking through a cracked version of this mural as a part of the Japanese Special Edition art book. Considering that this mural was showcased in its entirety in the initial first trailer, it's safe to say that all of this was planned from very early on in the game's development. Some characters in the game also have what's been referred to as special bonds between each other. These special bonds grant extra bonuses with their supports. Typically supports give hit and avoid bonuses, ranging from plus 3 all the way to hit and avoid plus 10 for an A-rank support partner. However, certain characters that share deeper bonds might actually get a might increase alongside the hit and avoid bonuses. Originally posted to Reddit by user Fake Kylo Ren, this chart illustrates these special bonds. At a C-rank support, units who share a special bond will gain might plus 1 and the standard hit and avoid plus 5. At a B-rank support, they get might plus 2 and hit and avoid plus 7, and at an A-rank support, they gain might plus 3 alongside the hit and avoid plus 10. So ultimately, these are supports and bonds that you'll definitely want to develop between these specific characters to really take advantage of their deep ties. The Flame Emperor has five different portrait sprites for expressions within the game's data, but they're all identical. This may mean that due to how the game is coded, they needed to have the image data of any possible expression for the Flame Emperor to avoid errors, so even though the Flame Emperor doesn't actually emote, the image does technically change. Reddit user Wanchial shared a screenshot of how they look. And that's going to be all the time that we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. But there's definitely plenty more Fire Emblem Three Houses trivia for us to talk about. So if you'd like to see another trivia video, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to get subscribed to Lucky Crit if you aren't yet, and be sure to follow us on Twitter and our other links for Fire Emblem news and updates. You can also join us in our Discord server if you'd like to chat more beyond this video. And thank you to all of our amazing patrons that help to make content like this possible. And I'll see you all next time.